too long ago, I was just like you, a newcomer, a little hesitant, but hopeful and ready to be part of something, to feel that connection. And hey, maybe part of the reason God gave us this name is because we feel called to that very purpose. So we're inviting you to fill out a Connect card to let us know how we can start reaching out. Are you ready to take your first step? Connection Church, connecting with God, connecting with people. was just like you, a newcomer, a little hesitant, but hopeful and ready to be part of something, to feel that connection. And hey, maybe part of the reason God gave us this name is because we feel called to that very purpose. So we're inviting you to fill out a Connect card to let us know how we can start reaching out. Are you ready to take your first step? Connection Church, connecting with God, connecting with people.
Okay, let's get our hands going here together. This is a joyous morning. The King has risen. We have every reason to celebrate this morning. Death has been beaten. Sin has been conquered. And we have life in Him this morning. Let's just celebrate our, our King Jesus this morning. He has done so much for us. And we just want to honor him, celebrate him, enjoy the freedom that we have in him this morning. Brought me into his stream, the river. 
deliverer, the freedom I'm living in. You are my deliverer, you are my promised land. Let's sing that again. You are my deliverer, the freedom I'm living in. Oh, you are my deliverer, you are my promised land. Oh, yeah. Oh 
recognize that Jesus has done so much for you. As we sing this bridge one more time, let us actually physically raise our hands up in thankfulness and also surrender to him this morning. I lift my hands up, lay my whole life down, my whole life down before you. Oh, I lift my hands up, lay my whole life down, my whole life now is for you.
Jesus. We just recognize this morning, Jesus, that you paid the highest price. You paid the highest price, Jesus, for our sin, for our redemption, Jesus, for our freedom. And this morning, we are just filled with so much awe and so much gratitude and so much thankfulness, Jesus, for all that you did on that cross. There is none like you. And we just recognize you this morning as our Lord, as our King, and as our Savior. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Welcome to Connection Church. Welcome to Connection Family. How about you turn to the person next to you and give them a big hello, welcome, hug, high five. We want to welcome you here. If you are visiting for the first time, give us a little wave. We want to see who you are. Welcome, welcome. Love the excitement in the room. How many are visiting us for the first time here today? All right, we've got a few families. We welcome you. So great to be here this morning on this Easter morning. Can we just turn our eyes to the screen for a second for some announcements? What, whenever you are. Sorry, can I have one quick sip of the bubbly? It pays to have an assistant on set. <laughs> this announcement is sponsored by Bubbly. Oh, yeah. Hey there. Oh, Chris, we can hear the audio. Sorry. See, I learned. I'm an advocate for Felipe. Felipe is making me nervous. <clears throat> Here we go. Hello and happy Easter Sunday, everyone. Today is a day of celebration. It's so exciting that we get to celebrate together the most incredible act of love in the entire history of humanity. My name is Lois and I'm a part of the team here at Connection. Whether you're joining us online or in person, I want to give you a warm welcome to our amazing church. We've got a couple of announcements to share that will help you find ways to get connected with us in the upcoming weeks. So let's get ready and dive right in. First off, if you want to know more about any of our upcoming events or want to be a part of our dream team, the best thing to do is to visit the welcome table after the service. Our team will be more than happy to answer any questions that you may have and help you fill out a connect card, which helps us to get to know you better and get you plugged into this amazing community. Next, let me tell you all about what's happening in the next few weeks. First on the list is that next Sunday, we will have a new edition of our 545. Have you attended one before? It's a special Sunday where five members of our congregation will each share a powerful message from God in five minutes. It's always a blessing to hear how God speaks to us through our church family. You won't want to miss it. Remember to invite your friends. And starting on April 14th, we will be diving into a new message series by our pastor, Pepe Martinez, called Babylon. And without giving too much away, it will be a call from the Lord to remain steadfast in a world is lost and distant from him. The series consists of three episodes and we hope that you can join us for the entire series. Calling all you. Our meeting is tomorrow at 6.30 p.m. at the church office located at 965 Alston Street. You know where it is. And last, but definitely not the least, and this one's for the ladies, you're invited to join us for a special gathering at Fireside Grill on April 27th at 9.30 in the morning. We'll enjoy some delightful brunch fair, build community, and be inspired by a challenging message for our lives. Don't miss out on this memorable time. Stop by the welcome table in our lobby to register and purchase your ticket for $35.
and feel free to invite a friend or a family member to join us. We can't wait to see you there. Well, that's all that we have for you today. And just a friendly reminder that we have water baptisms at the end of the service. And following that, we're hosting a sausage sizzle and we'd love for you to stick around. Enjoy some delicious hot dogs and connect with some new friends. I hope you're having a fantastic day and we're looking forward to seeing you next week. So good. Thank you, Lois. Yes, so those that are getting baptized, you know who you are. If you could um, meet Pepe at the back, um, out there in the foyer after, and he's just going to go over some things with you before you get baptized. So please stay for baptisms, everyone, and for some hot dogs after. We love connecting around here, and so we would love for you to stay. Uh, if we could have all the kids just stand up now and you guys are going to make your way to the back of the room. Your teacher's waiting there for you. All right, little kids, get their hustle on. They're out the door. So good. We bless them. We bless their teachers. Uh, we love what God's doing in their hearts and in their lives. Um, and let's just, as the ushers come forward, uh, we just want to have a time of giving this morning. And if you're visiting for the first time, don't feel obligated or pressured, but we just want to honor the Lord with what he's given us, with our tithes, with our offerings. And so as the ushers come forward, there's envelopes or there's a way of giving online. And so let's just pray and thank the Lord for that. Jesus, we just want to thank you so much for your provision, for your overflow in our lives, Jesus. We honor you this morning, and we just thank you so much even for allowing us to be here in this school, Jesus, and it wouldn't be because of anything else but because of what you have done for us, Jesus. And so we just honor you this morning, and we thank you, Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. So um, there's envelopes. They're going to pass those around. And as they do that, I'll give you a second, and we're going to uh, hear from Pastor Pepe. Hallelujah. Hey, how's everybody doing? You, you guys doing well? What an amazing job our, our media team, eh? Dude, they, they're amazing. Come on, just give it up for our media team. They're always trying to serve the Lord with their giftings, and that's one of the things that I love about having so many people, like everybody, you know, like that, that is a part of our team. is like they bring in their gifts and things. Like that. More, we are, it's more fun, and we are more complete. Isn't it? Yeah. And uh, I just love what you guys do. And uh, Felipe, a phenomenal videographer here. And uh, everybody. Anyway, so welcome to Connection. It's just amazing to uh, today we celebrate the greatest day of um, our Christian lives. We celebrate the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. It can turn into a very religious event. We you know, uh, often just be, we are so good at, uh, remember that part when Jesus went 
up to the mountain of transfiguration. And then all his, the three of his disciples came and he was like boom in his glory. And the first thing that they wanted to do is like, let's build an altar here. Let's do something here. Let's come back and post it on Facebook and celebrate it every year. And it's like, and Jesus says, come on. You know, it's like, and, and, and I love that part. I love, always love Jesus' answer because it, it's like we, are, we tend to just make activities out of special events. Now, I always said this, you know, like unless Jesus is resurrected and alive in, in our hearts, it's just another event. And I pray that today this beautiful, powerful, meaningful event it can become a reality in our lives. How? By allowing Jesus, the resurrected Jesus, come into our hearts and be the Lord, be, be the Savior, be the Master, be our guide, be our leader. Be, you know, are, are you with me, church? It's just like that's what he wants inside of us. He wants to become alive. He wants to be real in our lives. And, uh, and, but regardless, we celebrate this day as a, as a powerful um, event. Is, um, there are so many religions out there. There are so many people proclaim themselves that, as God and things like that. And we know all of this. He is the only one. That's what marks the difference in Christianity. He's the only one that not only came and paid a sacrifice for his people, but he also is alive and resurrected. And he's here with us through the Holy Spirit. And that is powerful. Um, I have uh, some scriptures and I want to uh, share with you guys today. We want to try to be as fast as we can because we have uh, baptisms, which is awesome. And then we're having hot dogs. Uh, or like the uh, Aussie will say, what do what they call it? Uh, oh, there we go. That's, that's fancier. <laughs> Hug ducks. Or in the Spanish we'll say, perro caliente. There we go. <laughs> and uh, uh, I, I titled the, the, ser this, the sermon today, A Divine Exchange. It's not original. <laughs> uh, you know, I've seen a divine exchange. I just love that because it's a, it's a, it's a true event that took place. This, there was an, an, an exchange that took place of our sin and, and the divinity of Jesus. And I want us to just go over some scriptures here. I want to go to three scriptures and then we're just going to take it from there. First scripture I want you guys to go to is um, Matthew 26, 14 to 16. Are you guys there? Yeah, you're there. Oh, you're not there. All right. So, so it's good to bring your Bible. Uh, Matthew 26, 14 and 16. It says here, then one of the 12, one of the 12, um, whose name was Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priests. Verse 15, it says, and, it's, and he said, what would you give me if I deliver him over to you? Say with me, deliver. Amen. Amen. And they pay him 30 pieces of silver. And from that moment, he asked first. And then from that moment, when he heard how much he was getting, from that moment, he sought an opportunity to betray him. And another scripture says, deliver him. Second scripture, Matthew 27, 1 and 2. And it says here, when the morning came... It says, and all the chief priests and elders of the people took counsel against Jesus to put him to death. And they bound him and led him away and delivered him. Say with me, delivered. And it says, over Pilate, to Pilate, the governor. The governor. First, uh, it was Judas. And then it was the high priests. Third scripture, Mark 15, 12 and 15. It says, in Pilate, it's in the hands of Pilate. Again said to them, Then what sh shall I do with the man you call the king of the Jews? And they cried out, Crucify him. And Pilate said to them, Why? What evil has he done? They shouted all the more, crucify him. So Pilate 
wishing to satisfy the crowd, released them to Barabbas, and having scourged Jesus, he said with me, delivered him to be crucified. What a humble man Jesus was. Um, if it was me or maybe some of you or maybe all of us, we probably have done something to defend ourselves. Put a little bit of a fight in there when we've been pushed around. Right? I'm just trying to think about this grown-up man, 33 years old. Tough, strong. He was a carpenter. Back in those days, they walk a lot. He was a strong man. He would carry probably furniture when he was delivering to people. That was his job. He was a carpenter. And yet he was pushed around and delivered like a product. From place to place, from hand to hand. What a humble man. Um, it was first of all um, Judah who saw the opportunity to make some money there. Greed led him to betray Jesus. The love of material things. The love of money. Um, he took the opportunity and delivered him to the high priests. He says, how much are you going to give me? 30 sil you know, coins of silver. And great, gave them to the high priest. The high priest, full of envy of this man. First it was greed, and then it was envy. These guys could not understand how come this person who call himself the son of God will attract so many people? Don't, didn't they know the Bible? They didn't they know the scriptures? They didn't know, they didn't they know the law? Maybe they knew better than the other guys. But how come this 33 years old man had a crowd of people following him? Little kids coming to him and says, I want to be with you. I want to talk to you. You know, people getting married, inviting them to the wedding. He was a fan person to be around. There was something in him that attracted the masses except the religious. People think that sometimes I don't want to be religious. So I, don't, I don't find I, I, Jesus attractive. I'm not going to follow because I don't want to be religious. But the religious people don't want to follow him either because he's bigger than a religion. It's something that will exceed our thoughts and, 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 and our thought process and, and our understanding. And sometimes where the religiosity stops us, also the ignorance of knowing who this guy, this guy, this person is also stops us. And, but in this case, the, the priests were so full of envy and, and they say, man, let's get rid of him. Let's send him to Pilate to see what he does. Let's send him to the law. Let's, let's just get rid of him. We don't want what he's causing. We don't want the masses. His crowds were full of life. He, wherever he went, and yet the temple, dead and empty. That a temple can be without the presence of Jesus. It can be full of stuff, but still no presence there. Now, I love that because the Bible is so clear. And in saying that the priests delivered him, he had, they, they had envy in them. And uh, Pilate then is in his hands. Pilate took him and it's like, oh my goodness, now what? <laughs> it's like, you know, it's like, what do what you want me to do with this man? And, 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 and he, he had the power to do something there. And yet he asked them, he has a crowd, he has a multitude. What do you want me to do with this man? What, what, should, we, what should we do? What did he do? What did he even do? And the guy, the people say, just crucify him, crucify him, crucify him, send him. And because of peer pressure, because of the fear of man, because perhaps the love of his position, then he was at risk. Wanted to please man, cause him to deliver Jesus. And we say, man. We can get really mad. I remember 
I don't know how many people, many, many years ago, the Passion of the Christ, we took, uh, back in our roofing days, remember that? Uh, <laughs> we, we took like about 20 people working to see the Passion of the Christ. I don't know if you remember that movie or not. It's, it's brutal. It's, it's horrendous. It's powerful. And, but it's so eye-opening. And, and then, you, you know, and it's like you can see the movie and everything that happened. And, and I remember how emotional I got with that movie, you know, seeing it a little bit. You know, sometimes it's more powerful than, than reading it and trying to imagine. But, but seeing it it, it, it gives you a different perspective. And, and I remember getting so mad at Judas. He's like, come on, Judas, come on, you, you traitor, right? And, and, and it's like so mad at Judas that, that he would do something like that. And then gave them to the, to, to the priest. And now I hated the priest you know, all, all together, like. Man, I hate these guys so religious and it's like so hypocrites and they, they would have come and talk so proper and, and it's like, oh my goodness, I would have just wanted to go there and it's like, you know, do some Mexica, <laughs> Mexican boxing move over there. Do you know what I'm saying? And, and uh, But then he went to, to Pilate and then it's like, come on, Pilate, come on. You, you, come on, he seemed like a nice guy. He seemed like an understanding guy. He seemed like he wanted to... You know, okay, he saw something good in Jesus, but yet the love of his position, perhaps the fear of men, led him to do all of that. And I can get so mad and, and trying to read this, and I'm sure that you too, when we try to see the event that took place and why, why, why would this happen to him? And, 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 and we can get so mad. And, and, and then we can think about the sin of these people and get so mad. And, and came into this religious thinking that, that it was them, but it wasn't us that took him there. Are you with me, church? And it's like one of the biggest lies that we can experience in our own lives is when we think it was somebody else. It was the other person. It was the sin of others that took there. And I, I love this part here and, uh, in First Peter. First Peter puts it this way. Um, in First Peter 2.24, um, it, says, it says here, He himself bore, say with me, our sins. First Peter, I think I went faster than the, everybody else here, but First Peter 2, 24, it says here, He himself bore our sins in his body on the tree, that we may die to sin and live in righteousness, and by his wounds we have been healed. And, and it's amazing how um, Jesus, or Peter, puts it this way. It wasn't the sin of Judas. And it wasn't just the sin of the high priest, the religious people. And it wasn't just the sin of Pilate that took him there. It was actually all of our sins that took him there. The problem is that we don't understand that the cause of our sin and our disobedience it had to be paid with the same level or, or value of the cost of our sin. It had to be paid in the, same, in the same way. You know what I'm saying? Like I remember, I'm going to put it this way. I remember I was a very religious guy. No religious, sorry, rebellious guy. I wasn't religious. <laughs> I wasn't religious. I was rebellious. My, I, I had my cousins who were going to a Presbyterian church, and I used to say to them, only ladies and all ladies and girls go to church. <laughs> Man, I, I, I love when I send them pictures of me, you know, <laughs> pastoring a church. And it's like, oh, what happened to you? Uh, and uh, I was so rebellious, and uh, I used to make fun of people like that. But in my, in my rebellious days, I remember I was uh, a teenager, and I was... Drinking at a very young age. And I remember one day I got so mad at my dad. Because he would not let me drive his car. I was 15 years old. And I got so mad that I went and crashed his car. I was that mad. I, I was that bad. And, and I remember just boom, giving him a kick. And the door went just... Boom, the whole thing, and it was like a two-year-old car. It was nice. And um, I remember I just ran from the house, and I was so mad. And then I come down, and 
you know, and then it's like teenager, and it's like, okay, what, what, where should I go now? It's like, okay, let's go, let's go back home. So I went back home, and, and my dad was there, and, um, and then my dad, you know, he's, he, he was a, he had a, high, a temper as well, but he didn't do anything that day, I remember, and, uh, uh, then later on, it was, uh, that wasn't a weekend, on, on a Monday, he says, come with me, and we're going to take the car to the mechanic, to the, you know, to the shop, and, and so we went there with my dad, and uh, I remember being me in there, and then the, the, the guy, the body, you know, what do you call it, the body shop, uh, they say it's like, oh, man, that was a big damage. It also broke something inside and things like that, so we're going to have to, you know, back in the days, it's not like right now, you know, just order the door, and then you paint it, and that's it. It's like you have to rebuild the whole thing, and, uh, and I remember that the guy came and said, well, it's going to cost you this much to repair the car and I re- I've never forget the face of my dad when it's almost like looked at me and says do you have money to pay and I'm like I don't and says then I'm gonna have to pay for your mistake and I remember the price it was too high for me to pay that my dad paid for my mistake. I always trying to think about that we will never see the value of the sacrifice of Jesus until we see the value of our mistake. It is going to be just another activity. Another day to celebrate in Toei, Turkey. And nothing wrong with that. We'll have some tonight. Or whatever. Steak. <laughs> it's going to be just another day where we get to post beautiful things. But until we get to see the value of our sin. What took Jesus to pay for a price that we could not pay. This is just going to be another event. And Peter puts it this way. It was our sin. You bore our sins, Jesus. You bore our sins. It is our sin that took you there. It is a price that we could not have paid ourselves that took Jesus there. I love this part because it talks about, you know, later it says that and we that, that we might die to sin and live in righteousness. And that dying to sin and live in righteousness is when we recognize that he paid for a price that we could not have paid. And I was trying to think about but why the cross? Why there? Why the cross? Why Jesus took, uh, you know, our punishment, the punishment upon his shoulders for the sins that we, for the car that we crushed? Are you with me, church? It, 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 wasn't, it wasn't him to pay, but we couldn't pay. And, and it, but I, I was trying to think about, but why the cross? And I, 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 just, I just look at the cross. I just look at the shape of the cross. First of all, it was created for the biggest and the most horrible criminals than they were. They were exposed there. There was something that only the, the, the criminals were uh, uh, being punished and, and killed there in front of everybody. It was in a, on a hill. It was exposed. Everybody could see the sin. So he was exposed that way. And I was trying to think about, but why the cross? And, 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 and I just only see the shape. Look at the shape of the cross. And I can only think about that is the only place where it connects the divinity to our humanity. It's the only place that it could take place. That beautiful and divine exchange with the divinity in humanity met. Are you with me, church? Are you with me? That divinity of God, that powerful um, redemption, 
of the love of God. The powerful redemption expressed in love by sending his son who did not have to pay for that car that was crushed by us. But he was the only one who could pay it. Why? Because he was holy. He was pure. He had to be at the same level of our sin. And I love that part to, you know, that how Jesus came and took that place on the cross. My question to you and to me right now is, do we recognize, do we recognize the value of our sin? Do we recognize the value of the cross? Do we recognize that it had to be paid for something the same? My dad, when we went, we went to the car shop, he didn't say, oh, can I give you this and a little bit less? No, it is what it is. You have to pay for that. Nothing could have paid that except the perfect son of God who was there with, with not blame. And, uh, but whose idea was this? It wasn't Judas. It wasn't um, the high priest that led him to the cross. It wasn't Pilate that led him to the cross. And we can say, okay, it was that who led him to the cross. So, but where did this whole thing start? I love this part here in Romans 8, 31 and 34. It says here, let me take some water. It says, that one shall, it says, what then shall we say to these things? And it says, if God is for us, who can be against us? Beautiful line. So, 32. He's the most powerful thing. So, who did not, as he who did not spare his own, what? Son. But what? What did he do? But he delivered him. He delivered him up for all of us. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? So it's like when I was reading this scripture, I read this scripture so many times. So I was reading it. And it's like, but if it's God, who, who can be against us? If God's for us, who can be against us? God is for us. Who can hear us? How, how can we understand this part? Because he did not even spare his son. And he delivered him up for us. So this whole thing, this whole hand down, it did not start with Judas. It did not start with, it didn't continue with, with the high priest. He didn't finish with Pilate. This whole hand down started in heaven. When God knew that the only way to pay for the sin of that, that separated us from his perfect, the perfect relationship with him, it had to be paid in the same price, the same price. It had to match the value of the sin, the price, the cost of that, of our sin and disobedience. It started there. The hand down is started in heaven. The hand down is started with sin came into humanity. It started there in the cross. It started there in heaven. It finished on the cross. It started in heaven. Love that, 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 that part, that piece here. Then it says he delivered him for all of us. Church. Listen. I, I do want to say this to you. That as long as I am the pastor of this church. This God sends me to Cancun maybe one day to plant another church. And some of you may come. And, and some of you may stay here. But as long as I'm the pastor of this church, I will hate to just ask to become religious. And we can become religious and not trying to become religious. So let's be careful not become religious or not wanting to be religious. It's all about the relationship with Jesus. It's only, it's only recognizing that this thing here is not just an event. It's recognizing that this thing, our sin, our disobedience, it had to be paid by a perfect sacrifice that started in heaven because it was the only way to redeem, to redeem us. It was the only way to pay for us. It was the only way to set us free. We are here free, not because of the government of Canada. We are here free, not because we have freedom of expression. One day it's going to be taken away from us. It's, it's already going that way. 
We are here because we have the freedom that we have experienced because of the perfect sacrifice on the cross because it was the only thing that could pay our, for our sins and our mistakes and our crashing of the door. It's the only thing. The whole thing, the whole hand down is started there. And we need to understand this thing here. Can we become alive in him? Can we become alive in our experience with him? Can we become in that perfect relationship with him? How perfect relationship? This is not perfect relationship. Oh, it can be a perfect relationship. If we just come to him through the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus and just let him talk and obey him and just become it. I love the part that the Bible says that he who began the good work in us will, will what? Finish it till the day he comes. I love that. Perfect in his eyes is different than perfect in our eyes. Perfect in his eyes is like, are you still allowing me to work in you? Are you still allowing me to work through you through your mistakes? Are you still allowing me to become real in your life? Are you still allowing me to change you, to speak to you, and to mold you in your imperfections? Are you still allowing me to have a voice in you? For him, that is perfection. We can have a perfect relationship with him. When we fall, he can speak to us. When we are up on top, he can speak to us. When we make a mistake, we can repent that he can forgive us. It's a beautiful life, imperfect, like nothing else, but so full and so full of redemption and so full of forgiveness. When we only understand that the value of our sins and our mistakes, it had to pay with something of the same level. And that thing, it was the life of a perfect man called Jesus. Let's not become religious and just making this another activity. Another chance to sing the fast songs. Jesus is alive. Are you with me church? And I love this part here in the same at Romans 8, 33. It says, who shall bring charge against God's elected? Who, who, will, who will tell us something? Who else pay for that door in the car that you smashed? <laughs> God is the one who satisfies, justifies. He's the one who pays. Who's the one who condemns? Who pay for that? It's Christ who died. And furthermore, he's also risen. <sighs> Can sound so religious, that recent thing. But it's so powerful. It's so real. This is the good news of the gospel. Is that he is risen. The only thing that is different. The only religion, if you want to call it that way, then has a God who is still alive, who is present. Every time you read his book, his letter, he's the only God who is alive when we sing to him. He's the one who is speaking in some of your hearts right now. Even with my broken English and with the, whatever, even with the, he's, he's going beyond the imperfections of men because he loves you and he's knocking at your door and he's saying to you, I want to have relationship with you. I want to, I'm knocking on your door because your life matters to me so much that I send my only son to pay for the price so we can have communion. I love that part. He said, who is the one? He's risen. Who, he, who, who is even at the right hand of God and who makes inter intercession for us. I love that. Right now, Jesus is sitting down there and he says, God, forgive this guy. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Forgive this. Oh, look, at, again, he did it again. Can you please forgive him again? He believes in me. I know I have no option. I have to love him and forgive him and redeem him and restore him. Come on, come on, Pepe. Come on, Pepe. He's saying to you right now, come on, my son, my daughter, just come to me. Just recognize that nobody could have paid that price of your crush and your sins. But I'm not bringing them to you to bring you condemnation. Who is the one who is going to condemn you? Nobody. And the one who died for you and paid for you. Isaiah 53. Let's go to Isaiah 53. Isaiah 53. I love this part here. I was going to start with this. But I want to read this almost at the end. Isaiah 53.10. And 12, it says here, 
But it was the Lord's good plan. Whose plan was it? It was the Lord's good plan to crush him and cause him grief. Yet, when his life is made an offering for sin, he will have many descendants. I'm seeing my son go through something and it's painful and it's horrendous. But it's the only price is the only check with the right amount to pay for their mistakes and the things that they did. Nobody else could pay. Their own lives could not pay. The government cannot pay. Their parents cannot pay. Their good behaviors cannot pay. Their tithes on Sunday cannot pay. Nothing can pay for that. Only this check is written with the perfect amount of their sin. And that amount spells J-E-S U-S Jesus and he paid when his life is made an offering for sin he says when I pay this he says he will have many descendants who are his descendants is you and I who believe it's his church all across the world who every day I saying yes to him are becoming a part of his ascendants. Their names are written in the book of life. And he will enjoy a long life, eternal life. And the Lord's good plan will prosper in his hands when he sees that all that, all that is accomplished by his anguish, he will be satisfied. And because of his experience, his experience, what he went through, my righteous servants will make it possible for many to be counted righteous. That body shop guy that fixed my dad's car did not come to me and say, pay me. If he would have come to me and say, pay me, my only job will say, you are already been paid. When the enemy comes to you and says, pay me. He says, it's already done, buddy. My father did it. For many to be counted righteous. That's the righteousness of God on us. For he will bear all their sin. He will give them the honors of a victorious soldier. Because he exposed himself to death. He was counted among the rebels and he bore the sins of many and intercede for rebels. I want to finish with Acts 2, 23 and 24. It says, book of Acts, it says, him being, being what? Him being delivered. Here goes the perfect Lamb of God. By whom? By the determined purpose of foreknowledge of God. In another translation it says, When God knew that he was going to be betrayed, he thought of the price. You have been taken by lawless hands, have crucified and put him to death, whom God raised up, having loosed the pains of the pains of death, because it was not possible that he should be held by it. When he paid for us and he was buried, he was crucified and buried, it was not possible for him to stay there. Let's go to verse 38, the same. Acts 2, it says, and Peter replied, so this is how we respond. This is how I want to ask you this. I want to encourage you to respond today. This is a response. Jesus replied, each, each of you must repent of your sin and turn to God. I love this part here, and it says, and be baptized. How many people are going to get baptized today? You must turn to God. You must be baptized in the name of the 
of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. And then you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. I hate when people say that the gift of the Holy Spirit is only for some. But it's for all. As long as you want it. And it says here, this promise is to you, to your children, and to those far away, and all who have been called by the Lord our God. I love this part because it says here, then Peter continued preaching. Oh, wouldn't it be awesome to have him, our guest speaker today? <laughs> Peter, we will be on the floor crying. Continue preaching for a long time. Strongly urging all his listeners, save yourself from this crooked generation. Save yourself from what? This crooked generation. We live in a crooked generation. If it was crooked back then, oh, it's definitely crooked right now. Have you seen the news that's happening? Have you seen what the United States are calling in today? Have you seen what Biden said? It doesn't matter to us because, yeah, we're Canadians. It matters to us because it's happening in the, in the world. You need to read the news. We live in a crooked generation, crooked and perverse generation. Bottom line, don't expect anything good coming from our governments. Don't expect anything good coming from the school system. Don't expect anything good coming from anywhere else. They don't know Jesus. They are not for the things of the cross, of the kingdom. They are. We live in a crooked generation. And we as a church need to be aware of all of this. And we need to do what this God, uh, uh, this God, this guy I was going to say. Uh, Peter, this person, Peter, the apostle Peter is saying here, sell yourself from this crooked generation. We need to be a church that is led by the Holy Spirit. It's strengthened by the Holy Spirit. Recognize that because otherwise we will be trapped in this crooked generation. And then those who believe that what Peter said were baptized and added to the church that day like about 3,000 in all. We're going to add like about six today. But it doesn't matter. And six is awesome. And it's not about numbers. It's about one life. One person matters. I just want to challenge you today, if I can, if I may, to take that religious experience of Easter, the point of view of seeing this like, it's something we do as Christians. Oh, it's Easter. Let's go to church and let's go and eat turkey or ham or Whatever we do, there is nothing wrong with that. But it can be just another day unless he becomes alive in you. Because then every day will be Easter. Every, every day will be waking up in the mornings into a living relationship with a resurrected king. It will be an everyday experience. Is what is going to wake you up in the mornings and trying to speak to him before you do anything else. It's what is going to be in your mind at night when you go to bed. It's what is going to be in between clients or in between classes or in between, or in between one job to another job or in between one thing. He is going to be present in your life and in your heart and in your mind. And it's the very thing that is going to keep you alive and keep you going and make you dream. That the matter, everything else doesn't matter because everything else will perish and will come to an end. But your relationship with that resurrected king will be there until the day you see him face to face and you say, here we are. It was worth it. It was worth saying no to things. Here we are. And he will be saying, come, faithful. I have something prepared for you.
to close your eyes, please, right there where you are. Jesus. I, I just pray, Holy Spirit, right now. Just like those beautiful words of Billy Graham used to say. I love when he said, God, let your voice behind my voice. To speak to everyone, Lord. I pray like the voice behind my voice right now will come and talk to every single person in this place, sitting in this place. Then you will bring words of life, words of encouragement. Then you will bring, Lord Jesus, your presence. Then you will bring, Lord Jesus, in them what they need to hear. I pray, Lord, that. And Holy Spirit touch their hearts. Some of these people here, maybe, not sure, maybe they have their hearts that have been wounded for many years. Maybe by rejection, maybe by bad experiences, that, like same as the religious people. Maybe by things that we didn't understand. Then he had created this just layers and layers and layers of, of things that have just wrapped our hearts with things, disappointments, discouragement, and I pray, Holy Spirit, that as you speak, you penetrate to those lures, and you begin to break those lures, and begin to speak into the heart that is, that is soft, that is flesh, that it can, Lord Jesus, just respond to your word. Right now, I just speak life. I just speak, Lord Jesus, the years of religiosity, the years of rejection, the years of just being cold-hearted to be broken right now in the name of Jesus by the power of the Holy Spirit right now. Father, I just break those things right now, God. In Jesus' name, you have the, Father, you are the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. And today you can do the things that you did yesterday here in Victoria. You can do the things that you read in, in these places and we read here in Jerusalem or whatever it happened, God. Father, then today you are the, the God of today, God. And what you did yesterday, you can do it today. What you did to others, you can do it here with us right now. And I pray. That every single person in this place will hear the sound of your voice. Come, come to me. And right there where you are, family, please don't open your eyes if you may. And maybe some of you are here that you have never given the opportunity to respond to Jesus. You've never, you, you, you have not recognized that the disobedience, the sin that you carry, it had to be paid. By a price of the same level and the only thing that could have paid for that it was the life of Jesus and today perhaps you wanted to know and say what can I do to give my life to this Savior what can I do to be saved and the only thing that I want to say to you that is written in the Bible is just say yes to him just respond to him to say Jesus I want to receive you in my heart so if that's you, if you've never said this before, if you've never ever have given your life to Jesus, if you've never experienced this before and you have never said, Jesus, come into my life and into my heart, and today you are here understanding that it was him who called you and it originated in the heart of God to, for you to have a relationship with him. If you are understanding this, I want you to just raise your hand right there where you are. Yeah? one person who else in this place who else that's all you have to do with me right now just raise your hand right there if you want to give your life to Jesus just raise your hand yes if you want to leave give your life to Jesus right now just raise your hand right there where you are family come on right there where you are yes I see your hand who else another person I see two hands there another person just raise your hand right there Right where you are. In Jesus' name. All right. Let's pray. I want us to all pray together. Can we all pray together? All right. Let's all pray together just for support of these people who are giving their life to Jesus. This is exciting, people. This is exciting. It's amazing. I get excited when one person gives their life to Jesus. Man, that's the best thing in heaven and on earth. Father, in Jesus' name, just say this with me. Father, in Jesus' name. I recognize 
that I need you and I give you my life right now. Come and be my Lord. Come and be my Savior. Allow me to have a relationship with you. Holy Spirit, fill my life. Be my guide. Give my, be my everything. I give you my life. And I declare that today I'm a new creation. And I'm your son or your daughter. And you are my father. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 It's awesome. Let's come on, church. Let's, can we celebrate today? Let's come on. Can you please stand up? Let's, we're going to celebrate today in Jesus' name. We have baptisms. It's going to be great. Come on, church.
have a wonderful day. Happy Easter. Have a great weekend. Please get connected at our welcome table. Fill out a Connect card. Women, go get your ticket for the breakfast, and we will see you next week. Have a wonderful day. Stay for hot dogs and baptisms.